Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel. So here we are making a Xianun's objective pre-release analysis video. Now, why am I making this? Because the last video got a lot of attraction, obviously. <laughs> but also because that was very subjective. And the second thing I would like to mention is that at that time, the Xianun's buff was 170% of her attack. And now it's 200%. I recorded the kit part later. So anyways, that has changed. And another thing is that some new information has come up with my testing in the following days. So I thought it's only appropriate that I make another full length vid about it. So enjoy. One is fast on one's feet. Try to keep pace. Now let's focus on Xian Yun and her kit itself. Now, I did explain the kit previously in my previous video, so I don't really feel like doing it again. But uh, to give the gist of it, her normal attacks don't do anything. Her E is like, you press it three times, so you do more damage. You press it two times, you jump less and you do less damage. You press it once, you jump even less and you do even less damage. That's about it. It generates the same amount of particles nonetheless. So always just do E plunge, never do triple E plunge. I mean, you can, but I will. I do not really recommend doing it. And then you have her Q, which gives you eight stacks and each stack lets your character jump high and plunge when they plunge down and hit opponents, uh, one stack is consumed. Her burst also heals your party when upon activation and every 2.5 seconds to my knowledge also takes for about half of that initial healing and that's party wide again. So yeah, she synergizes with Furina really, really well. She also buffs your crit rate by 4% to 10% depending upon the number of enemies you are hitting with your plunges. And she also buffs your plunge, the low high plunge. So it's written as plunge shockwave damage in the descriptions by 200% of her attack as of now up to a max of 9000 additional damage buff. Now this buff is only single target but yeah. So yeah that's about it. That's really the gist of her kit. Now let's get moving on. Like I will get this out of the way first. I have a C2 Kazuha and before that buff, Xianyun's wave team versus my Deluxe current premium wave team were about neck and neck with each other. But with this buff, she is about 5-10% to 10 better. So yes, it is a significant amount. And then you also consider the fact that an average player will not have C2 Kazuha. They will probably have a C0 Kazuha. So it in kind of increases the difference by a lot because 200 EM from Kazuha's first is actually a big deal. However, I will mention that I still do not obviously have tested Xianyun because she is not released yet. So some of the stuff might turn out to be wrong. However, I'm fairly certain that most of the stuff will be about the same. It shouldn't vary too much. So you can kind of rely on this video. However, it's not a build guide. I will go over her artifact and weapon options as well, but it's not a build guide. If you want a build guide, then I would suggest you wait until she's released and give me a day or two to actually test her in teams and then I will make a full guide for her and for gaming as well, right? So first I will actually go over my previous video and talk about the things that I said in that and if I still agree with them or if any information I have about them. So first off, let's start with double swords so the thing with double swords is that you can actually get them now her burst animation is kind of long so don't expect to have a great uptime on your pyro sword but yes you can still get double swords the way you do this is you need c6 bennett you do furina's eq you do bennett's qe and then you do another n1 when the enemy does not have an aura if you have a ping like mine then it just you don't really have to wait at all you just do bennett e n1 and yeah that's enemy has pyro then so you can solve with channels n1 don't do with the e because i'm not too sure if the e will be able to swirl the pyro in time before Furina deletes it again so just to be safe, use her N1 and then you can do your normal E plunge and then Q on Xianyun and then swap to your carry, right? I actually got the information off of Reddit, off of a user, so yeah, shout out to them. <laughs> and yes, so basically, if you have good ping, then you can just do the original setup that I mentioned in the previous video, which is doing Furina EQ and then Bennett's QE and then just using your N1 on Xianyun. It's just that the window's too tight, so if you do not have like 1020 ping, you cannot do it 
yeah stuff it's kind of cringe i still do not like it this setup is way better if you have a higher ping and it's pretty reliable as well the next thing i would like to address from the previous video is that i put probably a little too much weight on her not having crowd control i mean i'm i mean to be honest with you i'm still kind of sad about that but yeah let's move on from it so she still does not have any crowd control and her buff is still single target but it might not be as big of a deal because if you notice your abyss cycles you don't really get that much of the aoe content the real AV content you only really get when you have the rift hounds you know like 18 20 rift hounds in the same chamber so that's uh, cool but otherwise you probably only have boss chambers or a group of elite mobs where there's only like two elite mobs at once and then a second wave with another two at once there's not really that much of an AOE content to be found in the abyss these days so i think it might not be that big of a deal you can get around it but on, if you do face a true AoE content, then I would just play Melody Loop to be honest, or just another team that is more suitable for the AoE anyways. Because at the end of the day, you don't really have to live and die by one main. There's other teams you can obviously play. So in the grand scheme of things, it might not be as impactful as I might have made it out to be in the previous video. So I'm sorry for that. But then again, that was a subjective video, so <laughs> I'm kind of free to, I guess, uh, express my feelings in that. But to be honest, in regards to my feelings, I still do not like the fact that she does not have any form of crowd control. I would have really loved if she did. But yeah, this is an objective video. I will keep it objective and my personal feelings aside. So yeah, let's move forward. Now let's look at her artifact options. We'll descend Venera. And, um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> just go Noblesse if you're playing Xiao, and otherwise just use Very Recent Venerer. It's the best option you have. So, so, yeah, this section was pretty short. Almost as short as Xiao, but yeah. <laughs> now let's also look at her weapon options. Now if you see this sheet in front of you, you know there is not really that many weapons. Because I am not really one of those creators that just looks at every single weapon option and makes a long list of them. I really only look at like 4-5 or five of the practical options that you are more likely to use. So here they are on your screen right now. Fav Codex, the, my personal favorite. That's why I put it at 100% as the baseline. Because this is probably going to be the go-to option for most of the player base as well. It helps your energy requirements, has a decent base attack and also generates particles for the rest of your team right the second option that i expect most of the people to go is the old swarm i i obviously do not have it but it's a nice weapon with a high base attack attack percent substat and it also does give you energy recharge so that's pretty good another option you can use is ballad of the boundless blue the recent event weapon that we got but i don't really see the point of it it's only like six percent better than fab in terms of buff and when you consider that this is not your total damage your carry's own talent scaling damage and then their damage percent crit is also going to scale with it so in the grand scheme of things they are about the same and then you consider that the er you get from fab codex is 15 percent more than what you get from ballad and fab also lets you support your team with particle generation tdds i just put it in just for the sake of putting it in i don't really think it's an option worth going for because shiana's buff is decent enough that you want to give her an actual weapon i mean but if you do not want to then sure it's up to you you can use the 48 percent attack buff uh, and pass it on to your carries that's pretty good but yeah i don't really recommend tdds my personal favorite is fav codex and if you have then oath form i this one is kind of okay and TTDS is whatever, sure. And for the 5 star options, I really do not recommend these 3 options. I just put them there for the sake of putting them there. In terms of your buff, they are very very close to the signature. However, they do not give you any amount of energy recharge. So if you can manage your energy recharge within your substats, then sure, these are good options. However, the signature is by far are going to be best weapon super high base attack attack percent substat and it just gives you a shit ton of energy as well so yeah it's just the all-rounder best weapon yeah so basically you also have other weapon options but 
I don't really see the point of them. These ones will suffice and the probably the ones most of the people are going to use. So yes. But if you still want a detailed analysis of like most of the options that you can put on her, then I would again suggest you wait until she's released and I make a full guide on her. That way you can be sure that I'm giving you some concrete information. So anyways, now let's move on to the more spicy part of the video, which is the carries that she can support. And first up is obviously our Diluc. I will quickly, however, mention before we get into talking about Diluc that the issues that I mentioned in the previous video are very real and very much intact. However, there are now ways you can circumvent them that I had previously not known about. So the earlier thing I mentioned about double swolding being possible is a big deal for Diluc, a very big deal for Diluc because now you don't really have to compromise as much. And the second thing is that with the previous leaks, it was actually unclear to me whether you can low plunge or high plunge. But with the newer leaks in the Reddit, it's kind of actually clear that you can consistently get the high plunge as well. And if you can wave at least like 5 or 6 of those 8 plunges, then Diluc is going to be significantly better than he currently is in his current team. So yes, that's very exciting and very good news for all of you Diluc mains. However, the actual performance of those teams will really depend on whether you are getting that bonk, the collision plunge damage or not. Diluc is a Claymore user, so naturally he holds his Claymore upright in front of him, which kind of makes it easier to get your, that collision plunge. But if you're not getting it, then just know that it's not a very significant amount, but it is a noticeable enough amount to make the team feel like it's go doing less damage. You might not see the numbers, but you might feel that the DPS is lower than it should have been if you were getting that bonk damage as well. But with that out of the way, let's refer to the old video again about the issues that Diluc might have because Xianyun does yoink your Hydro Aura. So now let's look at that. Here's the thing. I was actually talking to a Reddit user in the comments and they suggested something which I will tell you in a minute. But basically with the previous video, you saw that the Pyro was barely able to wave all of the time the hydro was barely able to keep it up when you, i was plunge spamming which led me to believe that uh, xianyun will not be able to provide consistent waves for dilu however now getting back to that reddit guy he suggested that i might be able to test that out using sayu so yeah let's see now sayu's burst does take a uh, with animal damage every about 1.7 seconds to my knowledge and it also has standard icd so it will swirl about every other hit now the hit speed of sayu's burst is actually slower than what you would be getting from xian yun when you are plunging with the loop right so the result may slightly vary but uh, from my testing even though the wave is not super consistent i cannot say that you will get all eight of your plunge waves every single time but you should be able to get six or seven at least which is good enough for the look to perform a lot better than he currently does like uh, i will put that into perspective uh, with about an average mara chasse build 20 crit rolls and six high plunge waves now i'm not including the collision plunge damage here mind that you are hitting close to 700k thousand 700k thousand what the hell is that okay never mind uh 700k damage from diluc himself and then you have your Furina's damage and then if you manage to get the bongs then the numbers are looking pretty dang good so the next issue i mentioned in the previous video was diluc's elemental skill now that also applies pyro and to be honest with you if you try to use that skill in between what i just showed you the way to plunge with sayu then you will uh, overtake the pyro aura i mean you will over shit what the hell am i saying oh my god um anyway so i have now drank water so yeah um now as i was saying 
if you do elemental skills in between your plunges then rest assured your hydrora is gone you cannot plunge a lot consistently so yeah do not use his skill in between now this does trace back to another issue that i mentioned in the previous video which is the energy requirements now yes uh, you will suffer from energy requirements a little bit because deluxe particle generation suffers from not using his elemental skill in between because usually what happens is that you can use deluxe skills in between the combo and then after the combo so a quick uh, 3e something like that and you have two sets of e that generate particles for your team but now you can't actually do it if you do it initially then there's a chance that you might mess up your hydro aura however that should not be too much of a problem so i would personally opt for that but obviously for that i need to test chianyun first yeah yada 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 stuff like that <laughs> or the other thing you can do is just do your triple e on diluc after your rotation ends now this is also an option obviously these are less particles than you otherwise would but i mean it's really about if you are willing to work around it if you are willing to battery diluc if you are willing to battery bennett and your team if you are willing to have some downtime in your rotation where you just proc your fav on your shianyun on your furina and you do a couple bennett east then sure it works and honestly i would probably do that because when once you start investing vertically into the team i mean i'm i'm not saying any weird stuff don't worry i'm just saying like a five star weapon like a skyward or aquila for your bennett you have like red horn or double wolf's gray stone for a deluge you have really good artifacts then you might be able to actually output enough damage that you only have to one rotate or two rotate everything so the energy can't won't be as much of an issue and yes this brings me to my another point which is like these energy requirements are going to be the biggest l for lower invested players like if your artifacts are not good enough they are not that great you cannot output enough damage then you will need to build er as well which also lowers your damage further or you will have downtime between your rotations which affects your clear times in the abyss a lot more than it will for a high invested player who does have good artifacts because for him yes sure you need to battery but after your rotation the enemy has like so little hp left or like half hp left even then you can just spend 10 seconds of your time battering and do another 20 second rotation and just the chamber is done yeah right so you can still clear it under a minute but that's not really something that's practical for a lower invested player so just keep that in mind also a quick note before we move on from diluc is that c6 bennett was already a decent upgrade for wave diluc a big upgrade for melt diluc and for gaming C6 Bennett is also a very big upgrade and now that Shianun is here basically any pyro carry even Bennett himself like i mentioned in the last video lemonet so lemonet himself dilu gaming or any other character that you want to play as a pyro carry you just want to have Bennett C6 if you don't then sure but i would honestly recommend at this point just upgrade it it's a skill issue if you don't <laughs> yeah no offense uh, i'm not trying to do anything here but yeah i just personally recommend that you activate your bennett cc if you have it if you do play stuff that some weird stuff that will mess with your stuff with your stuff i mean i mean i don't know what the f Uh, so anyway as i was saying uh, unless bennett c6 messes up with some of the teams that you play it's really really worth activating at this point moving on to the second carry which is shao now shao i already mentioned the last video there's not really that much to say it's not just about the numbers here because even though shao is an aoe dps his single target damage is going to skyrocket because of xian yun so i mean i don't know what wanderer mains are going to do at this point i mean he was better in single target and shao was the aoe king that's how they settled their debates but now like <laughs> shao has xian yun so i don't know about that and shao also tends to have a shit ton of like upwards of 200% damage percent and then you have like 200 crit damage as well so i mean i don't know what to say about that because because that greatly buffs xian yun's buff the greatly buffs you what the what the
uh do not mind it my speech is kind of weird today i do not know why some words are repeating in itself and it feels weird to speak and yeah stuff like that it's kind of giving me a headache at this point but sure let's move on so anyway the uh, just not having to use bennett circle impact for a carry that's focused on aoe plunge content like show is a big quality of life upgrade now even though in aoe bennett will be a bigger buff for shao's damage than xianyun will be but i mean just the quality of life of it is just pretty good and for inas a very good sub dps like i mentioned in the last video as well and there we go again with the speech like i mentioned how many times have i said like i mentioned at this point anyway so i was saying Purina is a very good sub DPS for your Xiao as well and she will be benefiting from her own fanfare because Xianyun heals a lot. Now of course you do not have interruption resistant in a team like Xiao, Faruzan, Xianyun, Purina but you don't need to dodge if your enemies are dead, get it? Now we will talk about gaming. Do not say gaming, I clarified in my last video, he has RGB in his animations if you do not call him gaming you are wrong now let's move on so gaming will have essentially all of the same stuff that diluc has however there is a difference here which is that diluc can not plunge without xianyun but gaming can plunge without xianyun so if you are in uh, like a mass aoe content like the rift hounds then you can swap xianyun for your kazuha and yeah you're chilling but if you are in single target then or, or even like to multi-target scenario where you have tanky elite mobs like i previously mentioned as an example gaming and xianun is probably going to be a better pair because you don't really need to group them up and a lot of the time you can just crowd control the elites anyways so yeah with c6 bennett which i obviously recommended previously Gaming can also do regular plunges in between. However, I will not recommend you do that. At a baseline, you should be able to easily get five of his special plunges. And then you have three element stacks remaining that can buff your plunges. So you can do three normal attack plunges in between. But otherwise, just use a normal attack strings and or just dash towards your manchai. If I mispronounce that, I'm really sorry. But I cannot pronounce it properly. So yeah, manchai. So you can basically run towards Manshai to reset your skill cooldown faster and potentially get a 6th skill. But yeah, 5 is pretty easy to get. A 6th one, I don't know. You should be able to get if you try. But yeah, it doesn't really matter that much. Because his normal plunge with... Assuming that you do get the bong damage as well. Should be about as good as his uh, special plunge. Except it just does not get the damage bonus from gaming's other passive. Which is a 20% plunge damage bonus when it does the plunge from his, his elemental skill bcl ascent now of course we will focus more on gaming in his own video because i am also cooking up the gaming pre-release and objective analysis video however it will take a couple more days to come out because you know i'm just like a solo guy in his chair trying to record and edit videos all day long yeah it just takes a lot of time and for his uh, full guide, just like Xian Yun, I will be testing him on release and then taking a couple days to make his guide. That will be a lot of work to get both of their guides out in time. So I hope you can wait a little bit. Otherwise, there's of always other creators that you can refer to, right? So now let's move on to the next carry. My favorite one, Lemonette. Nothing has really changed about Lemonette since last time, but I will quickly go over it again. You basically have a free party slot with Bennett C6 because Bennett himself becomes a carry. Now just make sure that you get the bonk plunges, otherwise the damage difference might be a little too big between him and gaming or Tiluk, right? But if you can get the bonk plunges uh, even half of the time, then it should be good enough because the extra party slot you have can be used to slot in another sub dps like uh, Rialano Singcho, right also i do not think the kazo variant that i was cooking up earlier in that video is going to be that much worth it now because now you have access to double soul already however don't make that stop you you can still put uh, shanyun on vv and kazu on a damage focus build so you can deal a lot of damage with kazuha and bennett of together right <laughs> if you want to do that but honestly, I would recommend it a lot less than I would have previously because, you know, once again, the double soul can be accomplished with Xianyun herself. 
so if you want to really run Kazu on a damage focus build it's better to just use Kazuha himself as the carry and Bennett as the support so yes Pyro Kazuha is real and what the hell I thought there was Laminate section <laughs> anyways so yeah not much to say about Laminate to be honest with you I have a lot of things in mind but I'm not going to discuss them right now I do not think they are the kind of things about gaming about Laminate about other carries that I would put in the Xi'an Invid because the video might get a little too long and also I think uh, some of these options kind of need testing until she gets released and then I will make dedicated video on each of the, these guys so yeah you can look forward to that some honorable mentions that I put in the pinned comment last time but did not actually discuss in the video are first Ayaka Shena Fulina Xi'an Yun which should be her best team when you are against boss enemies for example that cannot be frozen and you have like single target content then it should be Ayaka's highest damage possible team that you can do right the other thing is that almost all of the claymore characters have a pretty good plunge multiplier so like you know your sucker claymore <laughs> characters like Kawe, like Shinyan, Chongyu, Razor, literally every single person you can use them with the C6 minute infusions and even other infusions probably even Chongyu's own infusion it's just that with C6 Bennett, you kind of get to wave those plunges because you get to run Purina on the team and you get Purina's buff and yeah, stuff like that. So yeah, I recommend uh, if you want to do that, have C6 Bennett for that as well. Kave is a kind of a weird case. You don't actually need to have C6 Bennett. You can also just run Kave in a spirit <laughs> It's It's kind of funny to say, to be honest, a spread plunge team with Kave, but it's very weird and it's it's it probably won't be that good honestly but at the same time his current team just sucks so much in the eye anything would be better to be honest i would take anything for the man kawe at this point the hazel carry i mentioned in it you can do it it's up to you i don't really think it's that worth it because hazel carry is kind of fine on his own anyways and with the faruzan he can do dragon strike but it shows mc Anyone, Electro, Geo, Animo, everyone can be played as a carry. Again, not recommended, but a new option if you want to make them a carry. Now, an actual practical option is obviously Hu Tao. Everyone else is talking about it. That's why I skipped her over in the last time. But I thought, you know what, I will mention it quickly. So basically, uh, at C0, you do N1C and then you jump to cancel it. But instead of just jumping, now you can have Xianyun and Double Hydro in the team. So you can use that jump to plunge down again and have some more damage. Now this is actually a lot more damage. It's about the same as using dash cancel on C1, if not better. So yeah, that's a pretty good thing that Hu Tao can do. However, the thing to keep in mind is that with Xianyun also removing some Hydro Aura and Hu Tao's Blood Blossoms also removing some Hydro Aura plus Hu Tao just having fast Pyro, you kind of want to have Furina with a second Hydro that's C6 Sing Cho or C2 Yelan. Nobody else is going to work, I can guarantee you that much. It's not going to be consistent at all. Just please use them together. Otherwise, it's not going to work. It will not feel good. It will not be worth running over her regular teams, right? Yeah, so that's about it. So all this to say is that my standing on Xianyun with the Luke hasn't really changed that much, particularly because I consider it in regards to my own account. However, when you consider the average Genshin player's account, she is indeed going to be a significant buff to his power level. But obviously this power level that I'm referring to is his floor. I, I just do not see her ever matching up to the Dragon Strike Diona Mel team because that shit feels just too good to play when you pull it off. Yeah. Anyways, for the other carries, she is a very, very good option, right? For Shao, for gaming, for your underwhelming claymore characters that want to tap into their plunge multipliers. For Ayaka, for Huta, yeah, she's a pretty good new option in the team. Do I think she's going to be meta? Probably not. Overall, her strength, I would say, is uh, pretty strong in her niche. Outside of her niche, overall, she's not that strong of a unit. And obviously, I do have some grievances with her kit. I still hate that pet. I still had that shitty ass pet that still yoinks your aura and still doesn't do damage. Like, imagine if that pet 
just absorbed or all like right so if when once you plunged and it swirled hydro it now absorbed hydro so every time you plunge it deals hydro damage now so wow that would have been so cool and it has an animo damage itself so yeah it would do hydro damage and that spread that hydro with the animo damage around any other enemies and it would have been so good oh my god but yeah sure we can't have everything can we yeah so that's about it if you like the video like and subscribe see you next time Cheryl on the beat.